Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the new WD MyCloud PR2100. This is a new top-of-the-line network-attached storage device from WD. This replaces the DL line that we looked at about a year ago. So they have their white plastic consumer models, the MyCloud and the MyCloud Mirror. They have the Expert Series, which are more powerful and kind of in the middle, and this one will fill out the top-of-the-line. There's a four-drive version of this as well. The features on here are pretty similar to the other versions of the MyCloud, but the big difference with this one, especially if you are a Plex user, is that it is right now the only NAS device that supports hardware transcoding. This is something uh, we've been looking for for a long time to be able to have our Plex server running completely on a NAS, and this might get you there. And we're going to test it out and see what kind of things we can do to this uh, as we get further into the video here. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll briefly explain in one second. But I do want to mention before we go any further that this is on loan from WD. So when we're done with this, I'll be sending it back to their mothership. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. I should also add that WD has been a past sponsor here on the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video. So this is completely my own uh, creation here. So let's get into the hardware. Now, inside of this box is a quad-core Intel N3710 processor at 1.6 gigahertz. It also has four gigabytes of RAM. On this version, the two-drive version, it is not upgradable, but the four-drive version can be brought up to eight gigabytes gigabytes. Not inexpensive though. So this one without any drives in it is $399, uh, $599 if you want uh, two, two terabyte drives in it and it goes up from there. So you're definitely going to be investing quite a bit in one of these versus some of the less expensive devices. But uh, if it does provide that Plex hardware transcoding, it would take a computer out of your mix when you are setting up your home ser server. So this might uh, have some cost benefit to you, but def definitely be prepared for uh, a higher price on this. You should also be aware that when you buy one of these things, uh, whatever the storage is listed on the box as you need to cut in half. So this is a 16 terabyte version, but you're only going to have eight terabytes available to you because uh, these drives mirror each other. Now, if you've never heard of a network attached storage drive before or haven't really used one before, definitely check out my NAS 101 video linked down below in the video description because these are more complicated than just plugging something directly into your computer. You have to attach them to your network and that often brings complexity. So that video should help uh, get some of your questions answered before you jump in. Now, if you've never heard of Plex before, this is what it looks like. It's a, a server that manages all of the media that you own and control. So what I've done and have been doing for many years is uh, taking my movies that I have on Blu-ray discs and taking the content off of those discs, putting them in a big file and storing them on a NAS drive so I can watch them on my different boxes throughout the house. Now, what Plex does is it, uh, first of all, organizes things very nicely so you get a really nice thumbnail of every video you have along with some additional descriptions as to what you're about to watch a really nice interface that you'll have uh, both on your computer with a web browser, but also on devices like my phone here. There's apps available for Android, iOS, for uh, different TV boxes, Windows, you name it. There's probably a Plex client available to you. And uh, what Plex does, in addition to just giving you this organization, is that it also optimizes the playback performance based on the device and the connection the device has. So if I leave my house right now with my phone, I could go onto the cellular network and watch movies that are sitting on this box right now. The problem, though, is that the Blu-ray files that I have stored on this box are enormous. This movie is probably 30 or 40 gigabytes in size, and if I were to play it back over the cellular network, I would probably get a frame every two or three seconds, given how big the file is. So what Plex does is it recognizes that and makes the movie smaller on the fly. It compresses it on the fly. The problem has been is that network-attached storage devices in the past did not have enough horsepower to do that conversion, so they would just completely choke up and you wouldn't see anything. Uh, so many people have been running Plex servers on a computer and then also having a network-attached storage device like this one to store the actual files. Now, WD says that the Plex hardware transcoding on here should eliminate the need for a computer. So let's take out my phone and have a look. All right, so let's take a look now. We've got a movie ready to go on my phone here. I'm just going to hit the play button. It'll queue up for a second. I'm also monitoring the CPU activity of the NAS device here. So you can see we've got the movie playing back right now. CPU utilization is much lower than we normally see on a NAS drive. We're at only about 27, 30% here, uh, yet we're transcoding a movie here in real time. Let me just fast forward a little bit. We'll 
we'll try some other stuff with it and see if that uh, puts a greater load on things. But as you can see here, it's loading up a different portion of the movie. Again, this is a Blu-ray MKV file, which means that uh, this is a very large file that it is uh, compressing down into a format that we can play back on this phone, and it is keeping up with it just fine. So now what I want to do is add some more devices to the mix and see what that does to performance. All right, so we've got the movie still playing on the phone. We're going to hit the Empire or the Turn of the Jedi here on uh, the device. We'll hit play on our tablet, and now we'll see if it can uh, handle two different movies streaming at the same time, again, transcoding as it goes. So what's happening now is we're going to see a bit of a CPU bump here. Let me turn the volume down on our uh, movie so we don't get into copyright trouble. And you can see that one came up very quickly as well. I'm going to fast forward on this one again, too, just to uh, continue to throw some wrenches into the mix here. Uh, CPU utilization is definitely creeping up now as it's catching up. But uh, again, we're hovering around 68% right now. So we've got two uh, 1080p streams running here, transcoding from a Blu-ray MKV, uh, no issue at all. So I think what I'm going to do now just to completely uh, kill this device is load it up on my iPad now, and maybe we'll uh, select another film and see if we can continue uh, pushing the limits here. So let's go over to the MyCloud 2100 on this one. We'll load up The Empire Strikes Back now uh, and see if we can watch uh, three Star Wars movies at the same time, uh, again, while we are completely transcoding all three simultaneously. So we'll let this one spin up, and we'll probably see that CPU thing creep up even further. And wow, that's a loud. Uh, let's turn that volume down a little bit. And as you can see here, we are uh, streaming all three movies at once here, and our CPU usage is hovering around 80% or so. So I think this is probably an area where uh, you could effectively get three going here without any problems. I think four is possible. It might be pushing it slightly if you go beyond four. Um, but we are seeing some decent performance here as uh, all three are playing back at the same time and our uh, CPU usage is around 70%. Uh, the RAM usage is at 15%, so we're not even using all that much RAM. It really is just streaming a lot of data through that processor uh, to keep everything up and running. But we're not done yet. I've got a fourth file that we're going to play back on this phone here. So I'm going to hit play on this one and we'll uh, see where this goes. So we'll hit the play button and uh, see what happens here. Now what I'm noticing here as I'm starting up the video is that the tablet here started freezing up on us. And if we go over to our two up view now, uh, we'll get a feel for the CPU utilization. So we're in the 90 percentile range here. So I think three is probably the max you're going to get on a, uh, at a reasonable amount of streaming on this because uh, it seems like we're really starting to tax it here playing back uh, some Blu-ray MKV files at high bit rates here and trying to transcode down to something mobile. But as you can see here on our Plex uh, screen, here we've got uh, four active streams here. All of them are transcoding both video and audio uh, directly out of the MyCloud. And this is not something we have seen before on a network attached storage device running with Plex. We've seen it with uh, QNAP and Synology drives running with their own versions of Plex. They have their own media serving applications that do take advantage of the hardware transcoders on their hardware. Uh, but this is the first time we've seen Plex run uh, with this, uh, this performance essentially. And it's working really, really well, uh, provided you don't really add in a fourth the device into the mix here. So I'm quite pleased with this, and I think if you are looking for an all-in-one uh, Plex device, this one at the moment seems to be the only one that can do it. But the hardware transcoding isn't all that unique to this, so this is an Intel thing, and I would imagine this should start working on other devices soon, but at the moment it looks like WD spent the time to either work with Plex or on their own, uh, get it optimized to run on their hardware, and that is, in my opinion, the primary differentiator uh, with the PR2100 over their other models. This one is really, I I think better geared towards video transcoding than all of the other ones they make. Uh, if you are not looking to run Plex on here and just want a decent high performance NAS, uh, one of their EX series drives should do just fine. And we did review, uh, I think, one or two of those uh, last year, which you'll be able to find down below in my Master WD MyCloud playlist. From a performance standpoint, this performs just fine. It maxes out your gigabit Ethernet connection, so uh, it really does perform uh, as well as all the other drives in the mix. And again, the big difference here is the hardware video transcoding on Plex. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.